Sampurasun, Om Swastiastu. Hello, everybody. Good morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are right now. So while you guys are having coffee, tea, um, I just want to say thank you to this land of Bali, right? So I think gratitude is one thing that is being part of Indonesian culture. And I think it's super important for us to remember what we are doing, what we have, what actually God give us, or this land of Bali and Indonesia actually give us, right? And waking up every morning is one of the, I think, the most grateful moment and like precious thing, you know? Like not everybody can wake up and then, you know, and then live their life and again and again and again. And that's the only simple thing, but if you just wake up, and smile and thank you like for the opportunity to the God, to universe, love, uh, Allah, you know, Sanghyang, Ratu, who cares? Like someone or something, some force that you believe because that's one of the things that makes Indonesia actually great and powerful. We believe on something which is God, right? So you can define God by yourself. I don't want to go deep into that. But I want to greet every people here in this room, you know. Uh, Indonesian people are playful people, especially I, I come from Sundanese people, it's from West Java. So that's why I want to play with you a little bit, you know. So I don't know if you guys already know each other. Just welcome to Manuel and Mana that's new here. And I would love to play some games, you know, like uh, know each other. Because the most important thing for us, for Indonesian people, is connection, you know. I think it's not just for Indonesian people, right? So people love connection. So I want you, I want to invite you to play and getting know each other, you know. Okay, so stand up, stand up. Let me get the microphone. So now, I want you guys just stand and line up from short to tall. It's easy, it's easy, right? Just line up from short to tall. Wherever you want to stay, you can. We can do it here, actually. Do it here, do it here. So it's more space that, you know, so people can see. Come, come, come. So just stand and line yourself up from short to the left. The, shorter, the shortest is here until there. Shorter is here. Come on. Come, come. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. So do you think it's, uh, it's right? Yeah? yeah? Okay. So beautiful, like so colorful, <laughs> amazing. I will talk more, more also yeah, about like the unity, the unity and the diversity. That's one of the Indonesian slogan. But now from short until tall, beautiful. Now I want you to line up again based on the alphabet alphabetical Name. So you gotta. You need to get to know each other. Like. But say your name as well. You know. So so everybody knows where and who. Okay. Let's see. Simona, Manuel. It's funny how you're thinking. It's a simple thing, right? But sometimes we still ask ourselves, so are you sure? Are you sure now? I don't think so. Something is not right. It's okay, what's your name? So everybody knows. Connor. Cereal. Helena. Manuel. Joe. But Joe, Manuel. It's J first, right? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Mana. Sam. Okay, nice. We can know each other. Now, the last part is I want you guys just express what is one thing that you love the most being in Indonesia, being in Bali? Okay, just one thing, if you can think about 
okay, I'm here. And then, you know, sometimes we're just taking it for granted, right? So just express and share with the people what is one thing that you love being in Indonesia? Who wants to start? It's paradise. So make it, make, make it specific. It's, like, it's, why is it paradise? Like, what is for you the paradise? Maybe the nature or people or... Okay, what is it? Make it specific. It's paradise. It's, it's so beautiful. It's relaxed. The weather's good. So much nature. So much offerings. Everything's in tune. Okay. Thank you, Connor. Well, I am still very much enjoying every day the fact that Bali gave me the most two beautiful years of my life when mm. the entire rest of the world was going to shit and depression. And yeah, she picked me. She gave me that. Now I am in love with her. Nice. And I intend to return to her as much as I can. Welcome. Thank you. Beautiful okay. words. What about me? I really enjoyed every day the nature around me like palms, uh, the, the color of the water. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's totally different nature than in my country. So it's something new. Amazing. And But I'm living here during from? one year. Uh, I'm from Ukraine. Okay. So it's totally different. There nature. is no palm there, huh? <laughs> no, we have <laughs> palms just like if you want like something plant in okay. your apartment, but it's a small one. <laughs> so yeah, I guess it's nature around. Amazing. So Thank you. Uh, what I like about Bali, uh, I like uh, the people in Bali. So yeah. there's so many good communities in Bali, you know, dance community, crypto community, and age community. You can meet people from, you know, different background, different nationalities. So you can learn a lot from those people. Agreed. <laughs> I get a little deep. Uh, so okay. I love... Get it closer a little bit. So I love Bali because of... Uh, the tranquility, the energy, and the vibrantness of Bali. And um, I feel for myself, as well as other people that come to Bali, it's like we're, we're just been gifted. <laughs> if, you're, if you land on Bali as a tourist, as a nomad, or as anybody, foreigner, anyone that's not local, you're already gifted with something, even if you live, leave shortly, mm -hmm. because of like, uh, a culture of the uh, and people that's been devotional for for eons, <laughs> and we're like living in that like um, that inheritance of their devotion for thousands of years. Yes. So you can't put that into words, and you can't quantify it. But everyone that's here benefits from it. Thank you. Beautiful words. Yeah. Uh, for my part, I love Bali because I feel like home. I come from Tahiti. Oh, oh really? yeah. That's far away, and yeah, it's far nice. away, but I love it's it. very similar. Like here, it's tropical, it. you know. People are nice. Um, yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I stayed here. It's been five years now. Five years. Yes. Amazing, amazing. And uh, another reason why I love Indonesia is I just married uh, a month ago with my Indonesian wife. Oh, <laughs> congratulations! Okay, clearly you love Indonesia. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Oh, hello everyone, my name is Sam from Italy and I love Bali because uh, the people, the connection that you get here and then um, kind of change the people. So mm. I get, like I learn new things, how to connect with people, so like working in the street in the morning for example and mm -hmm. you will change smiles with the local, so that things uh, fulfill your day and uh, that's i like it amazing thank you so much guys thank you for your beautiful words thank you for being here being the part of community because that's that's what i love okay oh what about me okay okay um there's so many things that i can say right I mean, some love but okay in bali especially bali it's just reminding me to you know to connect all the different parts of life, you know, soul, mind, <laughs> body, you know, energetically, material, like everything basically become one. So that's the start that I want to start 
with the topic today, actually. Um, you guys obviously already living in Bali a little bit longer, so you, you know the feeling and uh, you know the vibe, so and you know how the people is, you know how the nature is actually, and then the culture. And but what is actually really connected with everything what we are doing right now? Obviously, blockchain and crypto. Like, what is the principles or this culture or this you know interaction with gods and stuff? What does it relate to? How is it actually related? When I went deeper to blockchain and then connecting, I love to connecting the dots, right? I like to be to being the bridge. So because I, I was living in Germany for eight years, you know, I left my country 10 years ago, basically left my roots, right? Then I realized there's something wrong. Like there's something wrong only what they are doing here. So before I get to the presentation, I want to... I want to take you to my journey of observation how the world works, you know? So how actually the, the human being and the culture and the system, how it's connected together with blockchain, okay? So when I left Germany 10 years ago, I was like, imagine, you know, Indonesian people, right? So they are like playful, friendly, kind, and I went to the airport right with my big backpack and I just want to ask basically a guy for some direction because the airport was so huge and it was the first time ever in my life went outside of Indonesia actually this is the first time in my life take a flight even you know so I didn't know nothing right so I went to my opera family basically so I guess uh, like a guest family where I can live there and then interact and you know exchanged my culture and their culture, took care of the babysitter, uh, took care of the babies and stuff. So I went there and I asked him, like, I just want to ask, you know, with my, I tried to ask in German, you know, so like, uh, where is, you know, like, Entschuldigen Sie mich, so what is, what is uh, this thing? So where is, where is it? Like, excuse me, where is this thing? And she was like, so he looks like this, you know? So it was shocking for me, you know, I just want to ask. And if, if you're in Indonesia, you're like, come please, you know, like bright smile. It gave me a shock. So what happened here, you know? And then, you know, I spent time, spent life there. And then I realized I got influence, you know? So the way they are talking, the way they are thinking in a good and bad way. There is no good and bad anyway. It's just like positive, negative and stuff, right? So what I realized being there, Western culture, Western system, it's like if you imagine, if you imagine us human being as a tree, right? So what Western culture is doing is like this. So this is the tree, okay? So they try to push you or force you, go higher, you know, more like, more branch, more money, more status, more, you know, like more cars, you know, more, uh, uh, how do you call it, the degrees, you know, more, yeah, money, obviously. So they try to go higher and higher and higher and, uh, obviously, <laughs> sorry. So they try to just grow higher and higher, right? Money, house, maybe wives, you know? Yeah, so they're focused on scaling, like, like, you know, goal, you know, where do you want to go? You know, what do you want to be and all stuff, right? So this is how actually Western culture works. I don't know, you are, you, Cyril, can you say that? Like, do you agree with that? It's like that, right? So try to push, isn't it? Most of the cases. In most of the cases. Generally. Yeah? So generally. They are trying to push you to have more. Right? So then I realize this, this is not going to be sustainable. Now, like, imagine the tree is going higher, 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 and there is something missing. So I was like, there is something missing here. 
What do you think I was missing? What do you think you guys are missing? The roots. Yeah. I was like, yeah, the roots. So what happens if the tree is growing higher and higher, and then there is no roots? What happens? It's falling down. Like if a big wind is coming, you know, it just fell down. You know, like there is no roots here. There is something missing here. So big wind is coming here, you know, wind, which is like pandemic right now, you know, like conflict in, in the relationship and family. So when I was, huh? it's fine. So when I was actually there, you know, if, if, you, if you try to introduce yourself and you ask people, hey, who are you? You know, you ask, who are you, right? And they always tell me, and it's, you know, including myself, they always tell me like, I am this guy, you know? I am, I am 28 years old and I've been, I have this degree and I have wife and I have kid. Da, 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 da. So with all the labels that they've been telling me, and I realize, and I ask again, who are you? No, it's not who you are, it's what you are, right? So what you do, that's, that's actually is. And now I ask deeper, who are you? They don't, they cannot answer it. So who are you without all these labels? So now these are labels, what I can see. These are like the fruits, the, the, you know, the branches and everything. But they don't know who they are fully are, the whole, because they, there's something missing here, right? So this is what I call the Western culture, right? So this is like the Western system. And I realize that's actually what in the school system of Indonesia as well. They taught us like that. You know, the school system is fucked up like that. You know, that literally it's like if I am being asked, I, I go to my family, you know, in a big family and then gathering. You know, you know how it feels, you know. So you go there, basically you graduated from your 12th grade, and then you're like, okay, so which college you want to go? And you got a college, and then after you got a college, okay, where is, where is your girlfriend? And then they ask again, after you have a girlfriend, when, when do you get married? You know, after you get married, when is your, so what is your job? You know, like, uh, how do you earn money? And then you got married, when is your next children? Where is your house? And then, so it's like, it's built like that. It's built literally like this, you know? Bali reminds me of this, the roots. So now, what is the advantage of this? They're, the, they're, the people there are like focused and more like strategic thinking and more logically thinking. So they go high, that's why, that's why the head is also buff, right? Not here. <laughs> so, and, and, and there is a German, there's a German proverb, they said like, Germans are the land of thinker and inventors because they think more. You know, it's not that we are not thinking, <laughs> it's Asian people, but they think more. So, so that's why there is Goethe, there is like Albert Einstein and everything like that has come from there because they think more. They used to hear more, this, this part, you know. This is the advantage, but the disadvantage is again like, they don't know really themselves. They identify themselves and define themselves with who, not who they are, what they are doing, you know, obviously. So now we go to Eastern culture, right? This is something missing here. So the interesting part about Eastern culture is just you already feel it. Of course, people maybe they're looking, it's online. So... There is so many roots. We are so rooted, we are so humble that we are afraid to go high. Can you, do you agree with that? So we are actually, that's made me realize also I got a conflict there. I got really a conflict. So if you, if you see Indonesian people, right? They can't even say no, they always say yes, right? <laughs> so if you ask them to do something, they say, yeah, I, can, I will do it. Of course, sir, you know? But to the back, you're like, fuck you, I don't want to do it. You know, I hate you, actually. No, really. There was, I was feeling there as well, you know. But we, so for us, it's so hard 
you know, to say no and say yes to ourselves because we didn't, we never taught, we never been taught about it. And then, and if you go deeper, we are slave. So we have a slave day and hour where we serve, serve, serve. You know, 350 years we've been surfing, trying to, of course, struggle and fight, basically. But still, there is the day and where we need to serve them. You know, they are better than us. So then that's why, like, going low. And so I was, like, talking with my Balinese friend as well. It's like, there is a, a saying where they say, like, uh, so literally means like this. So in Balinese, I forgot about uh, uh, the name, but they say, like, don't go, don't go higher. So don't you, you don't have to know much. Just be lower, you know. Be you know humble and stuff. But they interpret it basically uh, the wrong way. So now I I want to ask you, what happens if you're only taking care of the roots? You know, if you see trees, if you are trees, if you're only taking care of the roots, what happens? What happens? Any idea? Have you ever seen a big tree with big roots on the street? What happened around the tree? Huh? Breaks concrete. Powerful, but it breaks concrete. It breaks everything around them, right? So, and it's hard for them. Like mostly, the the biggest roots is like the the, the tree is not high, right? The tree is not high. So that's what I see. Like. Oh, it's like, it's become also like a limiting belief, you know, if I can say that. I need to be humble, I need to be polite, I need to be kind, so I don't need to show myself, you know. So the hardest part for Indonesian people is self-worth, self-worth, worth, right? Self-esteem. So Indonesian, I, that's, that's what I basically realized myself. It's like saying yes to, to myself, you know, saying no and it's okay because we are afraid. So now, this is Eastern culture. That's why Western culture, you know, they love to go to India, Nepal, Indonesia even, because they are, they are literally seeking something or searching something that they're missing, you know? This part, you know, they, they, they are seeking basically the, un, the unity, the oneness, you know? So this is East, right? So now, what does it all mean, especially in blockchain? So I told you the first time, I love to be the bridge, right? I see blockchain like this. So here we, ha we, we see in, 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 in the generation, in now in decades, it's like the gap is becoming you know, wider and wider, right? Wider and wider. People want to grow and you know, you like the capitalism and the you know, Silicon Valley technology, more and more and more and more. And here, because they don't want to be that or they see this can be destroyed, they just, okay, stay here, stay low. But then they realize they don't have also money, you know, they cannot be, oh, 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 they cannot be always humble. And they got used, oh, that's, I'm literally telling you a story in my own experience, so it's just my own observation. We got used, I got used, you know, because we are too friendly, too kind, and then people used us, you know. That's what I see also in Bali. There is a lot of my friends, they're like much more, like much better work. They provide more value, but then Bule or expat, they be, they paid more, but only doing some little stuff. And it's like, no, you know? So here, what I can see in blockchain now. So this is like cracking, right? This is like nothing here. So this is the gap. Blockchain, I can see like the chain and the block that is connecting all this together. That's what I can see blockchain. So basically, this we saw it as a problem, right? So I see blockchain as a solution that connects all these together. I will go deeper later. That's how I see blockchain right now. So there is in, 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 in this plant or agriculture and stuff, there, there <coughs> maybe you might see somewhere, there is like when, what do you call it? Step, step or something? Where you attach basically a branch into new 
uh, into a new uh, tree. Huh? Like crafting, graft, grafting, and whatever, right? This thing, and you attach that. But you need, how do you attach it? You need to kind of tie it first, right? So it's not falling down. That's what I can see blockchain. Why? I'll show you why. So, does it make sense? Right? So, that's that my observation. So, before I go to here. And actually, why do you think, why do you think Indonesia was like, they left, like when internet came, Indonesia is being left, basically. Why do you think like that? Have any, anyone has an idea? Like when internet came, Indonesia is one of the last country that's like, you know, implementing that. Yeah, also. But then they need money as well, <laughs> in the end, right? But internet took over everything, yeah? Took over everything, right? But the internet, the way they use it is centralized. Right? There is only one instance, one server and stuff, and then they are centralized. Indonesian people doesn't like centralized. Indonesian people has been implementing since ancients. Decentralized. So blockchain is decentralized, and it's actually easy for them to understand because we are already using it. I'll go deeper. You know, Even the principle, Pancasila and Bineka Tunggal Ika, based on the principle of blockchain. That's what I can see, it's like, wow. That's why I believe Indonesia will be the forefront and the leader of this implementation, blockchain, Web3, metaverse, whatsoever in the world, like in the first five, like a role model, I would say. Why? Let's go deeper into that. Okay. Before that, I want to show you this and then I will talk as well. Because I think a lot of people doesn't know what Indonesia is and what is Bineka Tunggalika, basically. It may be cry like look this. It's so beautiful. Can you put the subtitle and such? And then... Close it. Subtitle and then see if it the the speed as well. No, this. Just click it, it was already clicked, okay? And then this, the, yeah, settings, settings? No, left. And then playback speed, 0 0.75, perfect. Now we can just restart. It's okay, oh, everything else is already set up. Okay? This is Bineka Tunggalika, Indonesia. Indonesia is like a diamonds that spread out the spread out in a Katulistiwa or a quarter. Around 17,508 islands in Indonesia. Spread around all over Indonesia. More than 700 languages. 300 tribes. Various culture and religions. All this it doesn't avoid us or uh, like interfere us to become a land or country that become one, oneness. It's a big task actually to connect all this together. To see Indonesia in the same eye, in the same vision, not in the different perspective or another perspective. It's a big task for us. But this is Indonesia. The most wealthiest land and rich from their kindness and the society that is open-hearted and then has a spirit as a spirit that want to rise.
Now Indonesia is being tied up from Pancasila. That makes us that makes us living in peace forever. So now we want to give Pancasila spirit that makes us alive of Pineka Tunggal Ika. Pineka Tunggal Ika, unity in diversity. Oneness of Indonesia. Pineka Tunggal Ika. That's the slogan of Indonesia. Bineka Tunggal Ika. Unity in diversity. Next. So. Huh? The bird, the bird is the mythical bird, like Phoenix, but we call it Garuda. Hmm? So. Just alone looking of the geographically or way Indonesian are living, you know, you know, and what is actually Bineka Tunggalika. It seems like blockchain already, right? Why? Seems like there is a lot of things and diversity, but there is something that is missing that needs to connect each other, right? And that's what I can see like. We have been carrying this for a long time. Pancasila being made actually helped me, Mr. Manuel, like when it was like 19, 1925 fish to 1945, when we were being colonized, right? Like around that, when we were basically grounded and pounded and killed and something like from, from the colonization from the Dutch people and Japan and stuff. And then they created something like a ethos, like a principle of people that we can stick together, you know? Because when they attacked us, you know, we were like, can I separate as well? And they need, or the first president of Indonesia needs to stand up and it's like, hey, we cannot do it. Like we are so powerful. We have 17,508 islands and then 700 languages and 300 tribes. We can rise, you know? So then they, basically create Pancasila. Let me go through that. So, this is the symbol of Indonesia. And I will tell you, and I will share with you why it's connected to blockchain and why blockchain can help actually this gap, the thing that I basically showed, right? So this is the symbol of God, symbol of supreme, high force, higher, higher self. So we believe, we believe that is Ketuhanan, the first one is Ketuhanan Yang Maha Esa, which means believe in the, in the one and only God, you know. And there is some kind of something, if, especially if you're in Bali, you're kind of already connected with the spiritual thing. We've been living that since we, are, we were born, basically. So believe in something, right? Second one is Kemanusiaan Yang Adil dan Beradab, which is a just and civilized humanity. So God, then human. And then the third one is Persatuan Indonesia, unity of Indonesia. You know, it's all these spread at islands, tribes, languages, culture, dances, food. Unity of Indonesia, unity of Indonesia. The fourth one is always like the longest. <laughs> and it's hard for us when we were a teenager, when we were at school to remember this. Sekerayaktan yang dipimpin oleh hikmat kebijaksanaan dalam permusyawaratan dan perwakilan. So basically, it's democracy led by the wisdom of the representative of the people. This land is created by the people, for the people, and from the people. And the fifth one is Kadilan Sosial Bagi Seluruh Rakyat Indonesia. It's a social justice for all Indonesian people. So if you see here, there's like a core principles that we are carrying and that we try, you know, to kind of follow that, right? Since it has been already like many, many years we are implementing this, it's like we don't need, we don't need, like, we don't need people to tell us about this anymore, but sometimes you need someone to remind, you know, to remember, right? So that's why, that's one of the reasons, you know, like I kind of have this gift 
or a calling where I want to build the bridge again, you know, bringing the culture of Indonesia, but also reminding what is our roots actually are. And then the thing that they are following, especially in the school, school system, they are going toward actually disruption and destroy, you know, they, they can, like if they keep doing this, you know, it's keeping the school system doing what they are doing right now, it's going to be like this again, which is shit. <laughs> so I try to remember this and then connecting with this, with the blockchain. How it affects the blockchain? What is really like, what is the correlation? Next. So we follow the defined principles of believe in God. God, who is God? I mean, you are God, you are God, you are God, God. God is the creator and we can create everything basically, right? Do you believe you can create everything? Yeah, so we are God. You believe in yourself, of course, and then you believe in a supreme being, you know, then it's more powerful. Because if I hurt you, I hurt God, which is I hurt myself. I will go deeper again to the other principles of Balinese and Indonesian uh, Sundanese, where I come from, which makes more sense, you know. So this is only the umbrella, actually, but every tribe has their own uh, principles, which very related to blockchain, guys, really. So blockchain without God is nothing. Who is the God? Human, no? If there is no human that operates and click the stuff, there is nothing, no, there's no blockchain, right? Yes, they're implementing this thing, they're putting AI and stuff, but there is always someone that needs to, you know, create first, you know? The first touch is gonna be you, you know? You, you wanna send uh, something in another people's wallet? Who is clicking that? The God, us. So we're already doing it, right? After that, it then it comes humanity, which is blockchain and crypto in this term will support a just and civilized humanity. The biggest problem in Indonesia is transparency, but also actually not a problem because we are so transparent that obviously we can see what they are doing. No, right? So. It's like so chaotic at the same time, but it's also organized. Look at the traffic here, you know, they're like, but it's still organized somehow. They can still like communicate each other, no, right? It still works, right? Because we have instinct, we have intuition, we care of each other, we see each other. We, every time if it's like there is a, there is a accident, I believe there is like, they're not caring of each other. They're gonna care of themselves, they're not aware, you know? So, the humanity. How, how can blockchain actually support the just and civilized humanity? So where, let's say this transparency is not there, you know, then blockchain can come in where they can put their ethos, their principles in a smart contract, you know? They can basically put all their data of people in a smart contract in the blockchain system. So there is no arguments or uh, there is no conflicts where they say, no, I have this much money or I have this much people, I have this much water. Everything can impl be implemented in blockchain, right? So instead of we say against technology or against social media or whatever it's coming up next, we can implement that. But this is the most important thing. I was in the panel and then they were like, asking uh, five my beautiful friends and very smart and we're asking what is your favorite product what is your favorite product in blockchain web3 and some say it like avalanche some say it like utility blah 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 and then I, and i came like you know what my favorite is human my favorite is connecting or understanding or be, you know Spreading the awareness of the human and understanding their own blockchain, that they are God. Because I don't want them to make the same mistake like internet before, you know. So I don't want them to struggle with themselves and then they blame the device or social media or something like that. Understand the God in you first. Understand your own blockchain. This is the blockchain. You see how much connected of our neuron and then, you know, Proton and all stuff in our body. That's the this is the biggest blockchain system If you don't understand your blockchain system blockchain will blocks and chain you 
like internet, like web, you know. Right? It will literally block and chain you. Why? Because you don't even understand how your blockchain works. So you are being controlled from outside, right? Because you don't understand God in you, the blockchain in you. So after that, or along the way, let's say, you don't need to do it one by one, because we are so smart enough that we can do it. Then understand the blockchain and how it actually affects the humanity in a good way, in a good impact. That's why everything that we are doing, the value, the project that we are doing, is based on this, you know? Let's go deeper. Nationalism. So we support the unity of Indonesia through the consensus of blockchain. Likewise, what I said, you know? So through the blockchain, you can literally see in transparency and what is really, you know, say now the farm, farmers and stuff, and farming stuff. So, and how much production it costs, how much the carbons release, how much uh, they ship to, uh, to the Middle East. That's what we are doing, you know, like uh, we, we put it in an NFT, you know, land, the rice field, and they can basically have the productivity of the land. And people that are actually cannot have access, let's say, uh, to, to, to these rice field things and only maybe the richest people and that can have access only in the tip of finger, you know, how good it is. So that's also the distribution of finance in the next generation and blockchain is so easy right now. At the same time, it's hard and then it's dangerous as well. That's why we are doing what we are doing, you know, providing so much value as much as we can so the people are not being endangered or being scammed and stuff. This is the nationalism. Democracy. Blockchain is led by the wisdom of the representative of the people. That's actually a natural part of blockchain where this part is going to be easy for blockchain, right? So where they put everything in the blockchain and smart contract and then people doesn't need to argue and it's like smart contract, hey. Because to be honest, a lot of conflict is because, you know, distrust, dishonest, and no transparency. They, they say, you know, even if to my friend, like, I already done this. It's like, where? What is the proof? You know, what is the proof of works? You know, so in smart contract, it can be connected. And then justice. Blockchain facilitates social justice for all Indonesian people globally. Not only in Indonesia later on, Indonesia can be the leader of the role model of what's coming next. Like using blockchain technology with the ancient wisdom, with the roots, you know, like how to build this together so it becomes a beautiful tree and becomes sustainable and it can grow 100, 150 years. That's what Indonesia is doing. Why Indonesia is already good? You know, in Bali, there is a system called Banjar, right? That is already decentralized, by the way, you know. The way they are actually, the democracy, they're they're making a decision. Every family has to, as a leader, which is the father. So, and then one family is being led <coughs> by one father, and there is another leader after that. So 10 family, for example, and then from this 10 family, there is one leader. And then from the 10, 10 family, there is another, the, the bigger, the, the wider uh, area, which is the street, and then the village, and then the major, the, the city, and then, uh, and then the province. So it's, it's coming from the bottom to the top. So each point, each node, each leader, yeah, each leader is the node that is actually supporting the system. If one, if one leader is uh, playing in the wrong way, they got, this, they got basically you know, uh, kicked out. They will kick them out and then find a better note, find a better leader to be able to basically maintain the system, right? This is in Bali. In my, in my tribe, I believe and I know from the history of my family, we have been implementing this for years. You know, in, in Africa, they say it needs a village to raise a child. Why? Because they can, like, they take care of each other. They are building this child together. And this is the child, the blockchain, the crypto and stuff. So in West Java, they're also doing like that, but it's a different name. 
like RT, RW, kelurahan, kecamatan, until above, you know. Yeah, of course, the supreme, the, the most powerful one is going to be in the above, but they don't, they, they are seeing the bottom as well, you know, below them. So, does it make sense? You know, so that's how I can see that blockchain already, we are already implementing blockchain in ancient wisdom. That's why when I see this opportunity where we basically can, where blockchain can connect all this, you know, where we connect Banjar, we connect Village, you know, to the wealth funds of the world to bring the money inside Indonesia, for example, and then to be able for them to move the money seamlessly, not having like troubles and stuff. Of course, with the regulation and that we, that's what we believe as well, you know, we are working with the government. We're working with the ministers. We're going to present our plan to a president next month. You know, we are working with the villages because if, and then we are working from the grassroots. We, we know the farmers. We're working with the farmers. Like, what, the, what does the farmers want? You know, like, Indonesia is exporting, or oh, sorry, importing rice, even though we have a lot of rice, actually, right? So now, how can we feed the farmers more so they can work and also their children want to work as well, want to have money, more money. Because now, you know, above, I think, 40 or, yeah, above 40 years old is are 90% of the farmers. And the next generation doesn't want to be f to farm because it's not cool and it's not making money, you know. So why I should have, where I should farm? Because what is my future if I don't, you know, if people are not paying me? So, because there is a lot of middlemen in between, that's like necessary in their world, but with blockchain, we can cut it. So we are helping the farmers to send the supply to the Middle East. Instead, instead of going through this middleman, we set up this in the blockchain. So the farmers, instead of they are selling it $2 for a kilo of cinnamon, they sell it $10 in the Middle East, Middle East, and then more money comes to the farmer's pocket directly. So that's the solution that we can see and that we can bring. We are doing it, implementing right now. So, next. What's the time? I come from West Java, and there is a Sundanese principle it calls Silih asa, silih asu, silih asi. And this is perfectly fit also to a uh, blockchain system, you know. Silih asa means we are basically helping or supporting ourselves. Again, God, ourselves. So asa is like, uh, literally means like, um, how do you call it? Sharpen, you sharpen. It's like sharpening. So you sharpen yourself, you know, asi, and after you do that, you give it. You give the value, you give like, you create something, like you say, uh, so you sharpen your knife, then create something, like be a chef, be, you know, like a lumberjack and something like that. And then Silih Asu is supporting each other. You know, this is giving, it's like sharpening, giving, and supporting. So you basically supporting each other uh, each other, you know, power, you know, you're supporting, you know, like uh, if you are a lumberjack and I am a chef, for example, so you can work as a lumberjack, you cut the woods and stuff, you build the house, the kitchen, and I will cook for you at the meantime. That's, that's, that's how we lived before. That's how we used to live, basically. You know, we don't need all these things. We don't need money. We only do barter, for example, you know, but then it, some system and somehow uh, there is implementation of money and stuff, you know, then like, yeah. So now this is all connected together again, like a blockchain, right? What is blockchain? Blockchain is only like a bunch of computers that are connected together, each other, right? It's like the same thing. If you are not sharpening yourself, how can you give something? What do you want to give? There's nothing to give. Then you are the one that will be, you know, supported first to be able to sharpen yourself, you know? Exactly the same thing as see. If you, if you want to give something, you need to have something to give as well. And to realize that you have something to give. That's how blockchain works, you know? 
every connection, every every system is not working. If the if the, if one block is basically not interconnected with another block, it's not working, right? So one block needs to be powerful enough also to support another block. So the best part is like everybody can has this block, can have this block instead of one people like internet, you know, one people one server, one people that is, has a lot of money. So they are supporting each other already. So we have been implementing this since years, decades, uh, like from ancient, this wisdom. And if I bring this wisdom and then tell them, you, you guys are already doing it. We just need a little bit of technology and it will give you like some internet and phone and you can use it. So with blockchain, you can sharpen yourself. You can give it some gift to people uh, that, that you basically need through blockchain. Asu, so you can support each other. You know, you can be in your genius zone and you support another system in the way that you are actually supporting yourself first. It's like the same thing like a Panchasila principles, right? This is one principle that I love that is connected already with ours, but it's uh, going a little bit deeper, I would say, and then like more clear in the way that they are explaining it or the way I'm learning it still. You know, I'm still newbie. I'm still learning so much culture, my own culture, because uh, I, left, I left Indonesia with 18 years old and they've been pumping and dumping me with the Western system. And then I left, when I left, it's like, oh, actually, what we've been taught when we were a child, spirituality and a connection to the nature is much more important in life than, you know, the system itself. So in Bali, there is Trihita Karana. Who, who are you got? Does anybody know Trihita Karana? Who does know he Trihita Karana? Here, just raise your hand. And it's okay. Okay, two people. If you live in Bali, please learn the culture. Please learn the principle. And in, if you are aligned with this, man, Bali gives you everything. Trust me, everything. You know, you ask something, everything. There is some power here that is crazy. You know, sometimes you ask and then five minutes later you get it. You know, so they are, they are, they are laughing because they are on my, my team and we are like asking something like Godspeed, Godspeed, you know. Trihita Karana, what is this? You know, it's again a tool, a system, a principle. It's everything, guys, just, just spoiler alert, everything that I showed you, Panchasila, it's just a system or a tool that means nothing if you don't use it, if you don't implement it, apply it in your life. Indonesian people that are, you know, let's say, not balanced, you know, they know this, but they don't know how to apply it. But they know what is really deeply, what does it mean in life, and how can I implement this in my real life? So this, if you can implement in your real life, your God in you is screaming. You know, it's, there is no other way that you are just, you know, pulled through that, you know, being forced. By the way, spiritual, I've been taught by a spiritual leader, and he's saying like very simple, you know, always simple. It is simple. You know, you ask something and it's like, this is simple. And he is like, you know what spiritual means? Spirit means force. Spirit means force. And tool is something that you cannot see, that you cannot touch, that you cannot, you can feel maybe. But spiritual means literally there is something that forces you into something. That's spiritual. So if you maybe heard about Jero, Jero is the one that is basically connected to the spiritual forces. If you're already having a connection with the environment, with the nature and stuff, then you are Jero already. That's what they told me. So Trihita Karana, look, just let alone this. It looks like blockchain, isn't it? Little bit like, you know, why you're shaking your head. It looks like blockchain is interconnected with each other, right? This is the node, you know, this is the node, this is the node, and it's interconnected with each other. If there is something missing here, 
The system is broken, isn't it? The system is falling, falling, falling apart. It's like the same thing with our own blockchain, which is the principle of Balinese that I like. It's Trihita Karana. Basically, it's the three causes of well-being. It's the principle of how they are, they are living, how they live right uh, here. First, the harmony within ourselves. This is actually the, in, the, in the, again, in the middle is the connection with ourselves first. You cannot have a, any connection. You cannot connect yourself to internet and blockchain if you don't have, if you don't understand how to connect with yourself. Huh? So this is in the middle. You are the God. And then after that, the connection or the harmony with God. Human, you know, human and God. That's why it's buff. It's up, you know, above. The harmony, the connection within God. What is God? You are God. Again, understand your God in yourself first. Huh? Love. Huh? God is love. Yeah. Exactly. That's the motivation doing good, huh? bringing value, you know. Wait, wait, wait. Can you, can you, can you say it again? Thank you. So with blockchain, I guess you can still do bad things, right? But if you put God in front, then we use the technology to do good. And then you don't want to harm God, right? Yeah. Because you know you are harming yourself as well. Yeah, exactly. So you want to use blockchain or technology in the way that you want to use for yourself. Yes. Right? But if the roots are based on God, which is, you believe, we believe that Indonesia have roots based on God, then it should work very well compared to other countries to exactly. adapt to the blockchain. Exactly. That's why we're going to adapt it yeah. in the crazy ways, like beautiful ways. Because we have, we put the God in front of us first, which is us first, you know. And they say like, you know, do you know any people, especially in a beautiful place in Ubud, <laughs> Do you know any people that has like, they are healers, they are spiritual teachers, but they are actually really depressed? They are so tired, they are so exhausted, no? Because they are only giving, you know? They, you know, like they spread love, but they forgot themselves, you know? They forgot this God here, this God first, and they giving, giving, giving. I know it because my mom is doing it as well. My mom is a healer. She's been doing it 26 years and then, Still, she is not. She cannot really value herself in the way that she should be valued. And at some point, you're like, I am like, I'm hurting here because you're not taking care of your old fancy car. You know, you need, yeah. No, it's just getting old, but it's fancy. Becoming fancy, become, you know, become, you know, uh, how how do you call it? Vintage, exactly. Then you need to take care more, right? You need to put more oil. You cannot like do like hundred percent. You know. That's why understanding here first, like God within you. Then it's easy to have the connection with your God, with other God, with love, right? So like, if they understand, like if they ask, sometimes they're asking me, or I used to, like I, I used to build a mentorship program and I guide people, soul retrieval, and I like basically healing their past, their limiting beliefs and stuff. And sometimes they ask me, so my clients are mostly Germans when I was there, and they ask me, like, how can I have the connection with God? Like, how can I feel that? First of all, a lot of people there, they don't even believe in God. They don't even believe there is something powerful more than themselves. Because they only care and think about themselves. Which is good at the same point. But then they're so egocentric. We are all, basically. But it's like... Or do you understand yourself first? Do you understand God within you? And then you can have that connection. So, the harmony with God, right? And then, after that, harmony with nature. The nature itself is God. Everything is God. If everything is God, then the nature also is God. So, if you are, if you are destroying the nature, then you destroy something within you as well. You know, so humans are trying to kind of 
transform nature in the way they want, <laughs> they like it. So if they are preserving that in that way where basically it would raise the value of the nature and maybe can interact with each other. How, how does in, it did indigenous, indigenous people uh, basically communicating each other? They know 20 kilometers away if someone's coming, right? They know that, why? Because they're communicating with everything. Like the animals are communicating with them. The trees are communicating with them. They don't need Google Maps. They don't need something, they don't need phone, but they can communicate each other in a crazy way. Everything that we implement is from them. From the script, from the manuscript of thousand, thousand years, you know, and they created to destroy, to control. But there is no alignment. And then harmony with people. So if you want to have harmony with your people, then have harmony with yourself first, the God and the nature. So one is missing here, then it's broken. You have, you have the harmony with your people, with the God, but you don't have harmony with the nature. Trust me, the nature will strike back. The nature will strike back. Exactly the same thing here. You have this and this, but not having a harmony with the people. People will strike easily. <laughs> Obviously, right? <laughs> yeah. And if you don't have, if you have this too, but doesn't have harmony with God, oh my gosh. Just settle down and buckle up. Something will happen with you. You know, like accidents or something like that that you try to understand and why it's like that and understanding or blame other people. Oh, they are too fast and, you know, like this chaotic and blah, blah, blah. What is it related to blockchain? Can have someone explain to me? I think you already have the connection. What do you think how this principle relates to blockchain? I want to challenge you. You should get the connection. Huh? Hmm? Yeah, there is a mic. What do you think from this principle? How can this principle relate to blockchain and Web3? Because it's all interconnected. All of it. Everything we're doing is interconnected of everything else and everyone else. Nature, God, everything. It's all interconnected. Yeah. I don't know, probably more simply than that. Simple. It's all interconnected. You break one chain, it's not working, right? You break one block, it's not working. That's why I love blockchain. Because we've been implementing this for many, 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 many years and decades, decades. And now we can scale it in the way that people does need to have the conflict. It's like automated, basically. Automated principles of Vita Karana, Pancasila, Siliasa, Siliasi, Siliasu. Any other idea? What do you think where these principles, all these principles I've been sharing with you, are connected with blockchain or with the world that is coming in the future? I'm curious. Let's go, let's go. Manuel, my friend, what do you think? No? You don't have any idea? Huh? You're processing. Amazing. No idea? One of the part is that, but another part is what I can see is the way that an Indonesian living and the way that actually the ancient wisdom is telling us. If we if we create this first and then implementing the technology in the way it supports the power and the and the the forces of blockchain nothing can stop us yeah <clears throat> god the opposite of god is corruption right it can be yeah, yeah. it is literally corruption mm -hmm. which is evil um, evil intention and everything yeah. So blockchain also help in that because it exactly you cannot corrupt with the smart contracts exactly what's put um, in the in the smart contract it will be like that yeah data cannot hide anymore data exactly uh, <coughs> uh, yeah censorship resistance censorship there is a lot of things that's literally a lot of things you can implement 
from the human human, how the human interact, how actually it implemented in the blockchain, you know, how implemented in the technology in the web three, you know. Like I said, in the in the appliance of the things that we are doing, you know, farmers, you know, farmers are not getting like enough money for their own child, even though they are the one that feeding us. They're the one that feeding us, no? If there are no farmers, they cannot we cannot eat, right? But they're the the one that actually doesn't have enough money. You know? Back then, commodities or agriculture, the one that has farms are the richest. No, literally, the richest. You know, now they're not the richest anymore. They have been taken, you know, because they don't understand the game. Now if we understand the game and basically implement and help farmers create NFT, you know, the farmers can be farm, farmers, but if they can provide and feed their children more and more, their family more, you know, they're motivated to work, no? They're motivated to work. So we take the farm, put it in an NFT, you know, and then people can basically invest and they can buy the productivity of the land without even owning that. The ownership is still in the farmers, within the farmers, you know. You buy an NFT for a limited time. This is one of the projects from our friend Five Harvesto, literally Indonesian people, Indonesian guy, Indonesian, like, amazing human being. They take the NFTs and you buy the productivity of the land. You're not taking anything from anyone. You only have, they're only sharing with you. They're only silly asu with you, silly asi. They only share with you, you know. If I earn more money, why I can, like, I, I can share. But if I don't have nothing, what should I share? Like, how, what can I share? You know, so we turn this into NFT. People can buy the productivity of the land. That's the real value. That's the real blockchain implementation. So we feed more children, we feed more family, we feed ourselves more because the children and the teenagers are seeing, oh, oh, wait, farming, making a lot of money now? Let's go, let's go, let's go, you know? He creates a metaverse where they teach basically children or every people how to farm. And in real time, they farm it for them, you know? Now we're connecting this into another project which calls FarmSend, where we take the supply chain to Middle East within the blockchain, where instead of like, so for Farfai, so for example, they like 30% get the farmers and 70% is the investors. Now, instead of they're taking it and sending the supply or selling the supply here, they take the supply and then send it to the Middle East and then sell it five times more. Why? Because they have more money and they want to share their money. Really, they want to share their money because they don't know where to put. So they buy, you know, five times more. So the farmers get 150%, 150% instead of 30%, and the investor get 350. That's the implementation of FarmSend and with all the projects that we've been doing, you know. Mining, copper mining, nickel, uh, uh, iron, silver, how many of you guys has some commodities? A commodities, just like a real commodity. Or bought, have, has ever bought. I never bought this shit. Because I don't know how. No, really, I don't know how to buy it. You know, because back then the commodities, like, there's only wealthy people can access it. No? Right? But who is the one that mines? There's, there are locals there. And they mines. You know, this guy was a miner and you broke everything in your body, right? Because of that. But you get nothing. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. So you, 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 the body is broken and stuff. So, and the, the richest people are the one that has the mine. They are the one that uh, basically can access it. Now we're tokenizing commodities. Com we're tokenizing the mine, copper mining, as we speak. You know, so people can access it. Every three people in the world with tokenization. You know, even the miner itself can buy the mining, can, can buy the token version, and you get the dividends. You're not buying the ownership again through the tokenization or this NFT or this space through blockchain. You keep the ownership to the land, to the human, to the nature, to the god, and you only get the first version of token, you know, and you buy this token, and which gives you a dividend. Every profit that's coming, 
in this area, you will get it. And guess what? The farmers can access it in the tip of finger, can teach them, you know, and we provide them facilities and all stuff. So that's the real blockchain implementation. That's what we can see and what we are, what, what we are doing that's basically based on the principles of God's uh, culture, indigenous people, Panchasila, you know. So that's the future of crypto, what I can see. That's the future of blockchain. Like the coins that doesn't have any value, they will die, you know. They will disappear. They're not worthy. They're worthless, you know. So, but this is cannot take it. Like, this can be implemented in blockchain, but blockchain cannot take it if you understand yourself, right? Any question? 1227. Any question? Any question? Yeah. Okay, can we give them the microphone? Hey, hello. Hey. So yeah, just a question regarding the dividend. Like, uh, as you know, I'm also trying to do the same thing with travel and tourism. Mm -hmm. So what's your solution to go through this legal frame in Indonesia and give back the dividend like NFT Chocolate is doing at this moment? Yes. I don't know if you told about it before. Yeah. But you guys are doing the Fun same time. and I'm doing also the same. So what's your solution? What did you find to give back the dividend without having to access the license from OGK? Okay, good question. So now the the mining the mining project, this real earth element, they're tokenizing their stuff with the SEC secured, you know, that's they are already registered in US, basically. So what we can do or what we are doing is basically we are creating the framework with the legal structure and stuff that you can use everywhere in the world. Because you know, US is still powerful, basically, right? So now in Indonesia, what we are doing is we are partnering with the government. We are partnering, we have our own law firm, you know, they know every each kind of the legal structure that we build, and we are building now a certification of you know token or project that will come to Indonesia. We're gonna speak, we, we build a whole framework, as you know, in over uh, 2030, where we basically help Indonesia to set up regulation and uh, legal structure for blockchain, for putting the capital here to Indonesia, because as, as you know, you know, like it's hard for the foreign capital, and they need money, Indonesia needs money, they need to money. Yeah, but they don't know how to, Transfer the money in the like in the like big money, especially from the foreign capital. So we are presenting basically the framework of RE that has been successful to Indonesian government, which is the Ministry of uh, Defense, you know, and they are like, wow, so we can have the ownership. Indonesia, the local can have the ownership and the people can get only the tokenization and the dividends. Amazing. They're using this as, as easy security legal frameworks. You know, that's why, you know, if everybody is telling you like, oh, how I, I want to tokenize this thing, you know, and it, like making a token is easy right now, right? But the legal structure, the dividends and all the stuff, you need to know now. So now that's what we are doing right now. And we're, we're going to present, we're going to meet actually in the 15th of September, the regulators, you know, how, like, what is the problem? You know, why, like everybody wants to build something, build Indonesia in a better way, right? So especially we building a project that are, you know, it's beautiful. You're building travel and tourism projects, which uh, uh, with the token. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's that's the thing that we are doing with the government, you know, so that's the legal structure and the legal framework with the re we have it already so we can build it for you and it's implement. It's from around the world. even Indonesia can take it, you know, uh, but for Indonesia, in Indonesia itself, we are, as we speak, setting it, like building the regulation framework and partnering with the governments, you know, and all the players around. Question answered? Yeah. Amazing. Any question? Any other questions? Mana, Manuel, everybody? Oh. Oops.
I just have um, I need help. Uh, to, I'm seeking help because mm -hmm. I have a project that might help the ecosystem for Indonesia. Okay, what is your project? Maybe it's like people here, the community can. Right. Okay. So now I'm building application on Web three. You know, blockchain, decentralized. I'm not a coder. I'm like uh, the one who sees the vision. Vision. Let's say. Then I have coders. I'm trying to work with coders. Uh, basically, the first application is to bring the crypto money inside Indonesia the easy way. Mm -hmm. so, like exchange. Uh, yeah, but decentralized. But uh, so basically, it's like an application like uh, Tinder, mm -hmm. where people meet each other in real life to okay. exchange a crypto part mm -hmm. with cash. Okay. The cash part, okay. not uh, online money, because right now uh, for Uli, let's say, you know, it's pretty hard. It's not easy to open a bank account here. So mm -hmm. what they do, they go only to here or Indodax to cash out, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm trying to create something decentralized where everyone can withdraw the crypto anywhere. Okay. What is um, your problem? What is your biggest problem? Uh, today? I, I, have, I either go two ways, either fully Web3 decentralized, I don't work with governments, mm -hmm. either I go with the governments and I guess uh, I need to expose everything and either they take all or either we share the ideas and we work together, I guess. Remember this again, you know, you sharpen your knife and you share. Yep. If you keep it by yourself, then you will get crushed at some point. You know, even decentralized, the idea of decentralization, decentralization is not that you are keeping in yourself, you know. It works because it's working with each other. And that can be implemented in real value and regulation and with the government. Yes. Governments wants actually their people to be safe, to be secure, to yeah. be wealthy and stuff, right? That's the intention behind it. Of yeah. course, you can talk about another control and blah, 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 but that's their intention. If yeah. you, especially if you're talking with them directly. Yeah, that's exactly. their intention. That's, that's why I need help. Exactly. To, uh, the hookup. Yeah. To come, present the project. Come, because... come to our come to our community and then we will take uh, basically his idea and then talk with my team, Connor and Cyril after this and then just tell them what is your project basically and yeah. then see maybe we have like a, like certain points where we see that can help you basically. I believe it's very good. Yeah. Yeah, there is already there is already from our friends they are doing it already. So why not you're teaming up with them and then do the same thing at the same yes, time? Yes, could be. You know what I mean? So just talk with our people sure. later. But you say you, you said you're gonna present something to governments yeah. anytime soon. But that's basically the the plan. We will we will also as as well here share with with our community obviously you know that the plan the framework the cohesive plan with the infrastructure. With all this, basically, you know, building the yeah. building, building a co-living and co-working space where all the talents are, you know, from Indonesia can hooked up there and then can be, you know, like Sili Asa again, you know, so the people that can Sili Asi, people can that can give that has the value that has the power already, they can basically teach them and then the the one that's being raised, the one that's like sharpened from them, we can connect it and then we're building the environment, we're building, we have already been given. A, building from governments itself we can do everything there we can been given in park ubud you know to build the incubator as we speak we are building the incubators you know the, the frameworks itself itself so if you if you if you are if you have a project that's aligned with our core principles because we're not taking project if we see like you only care about money we want like them you know to take the take out and withdraw stuff you know well, but this may help a lot the, to bring a lot exactly. of money so in we, Indonesia. We see, and so we have a system later where we fed the project first, we fed the people. Hey, are you aligned with our ideas, our visions? You know, along the way, and where where we can put you? Okay, we need you need the developer. Okay, this is the developer from our incubator, and this is like the marketing team and stuff. And then we raise your we raise your project basically. That's yeah. what the incubator does. Yeah, sweet, amazing. Just talk with us later. All right. Anything else? Nothing? Then there is nothing to say anymore. I think it was already clear enough, no? Was it clear?
I hope it gives you value. And I hope uh, we all here can basically bring us ourselves together and then, you know, like level up our blockchain system with from layer one, layer two, layer three, our own blockchain system. And then we can help the blockchain system through the principle of Indonesia. Any principles that you see that's actually supporting God, nature, people, and ourselves, bring it on. You know, that's the, basically the core principle of Sumati, the incubator. We have this, you know, so yeah. Thank you so much. Sampurasun. Sosiasu.